gave me personally a lot of confidence that being somebody who didn't have an agency background and didn't have a marketing background, I was like, you know what, yeah, I can do this. It literally is a 24-7 job sometimes. So I would say the con is, is the work-life balance. I would say the pro is definitely you never get bored. You will never find yourself twiddling your thumbs at an agency. At least I have not yet. On the agency side, uh, when we see someone that has very relevant experience on the client side, that's very appealing because I may have a, a healthcare client or I may have a financial client. So that, that becomes appealing that you have some specialized knowledge. And on the flip side, uh, if you're going to you know, work in a search program or a marketing program on, on the, the client side uh, and, and you have agency experience, I think that's appealing as well. There's a lot of local just like ad club groups that you can certainly join from a, from a networking standpoint. I also wouldn't be um, afraid if you're passionate about any sort of nonprofit organizations to either try to get on boards there or talk to people on boards there or start volunteering there and, and get hooked up with the board because chances are there's someone on the board that works for an agency or someone in marketing that knows Someone who knows someone who knows someone. I think one thing that, and I'll say from interviewing tons of people personally, that bothers me is when they don't recognize their audience. Make sure you've read the job description and you know who the person you're meeting is and what they're looking for. Because if you're talking about the sun, moon, and stars and not getting to what they want, you're, you've lost them already. For those of us who are transitioning into a different career path, and we might not have a lot of projects. Um, you know, sort of that are work related, but we do have a significant number of academic projects. How do we sort of market those during an interview? Because it's not something you can really put on a resume. I think what you look for the opportunity to explain, um, and, and it goes, this all goes back to a lot of what we were talking about of understanding the, the client. You know, if somebody's sitting across from me and they know, you know, our, our healthcare network is growing and they can sit across and say, you know what, yeah, okay, I, I got a marketing degree and I'm coming from this background and I did these projects, but I understand how to do a 360 marketing plan. I understand how to take PR and Facebook and make them work together. You know, and just, just show you understand the industry. Um, so I've been applying for jobs and stuff and I've been getting a lot of responses saying, well, you have a lot of great skills. They don't quite meet what we're looking for at this time. We'll keep your file, your resume on file. And how do you, is there a way to follow up on that and to make sure that your name is staying top of mind and not translate it into we'll keep it in a circular file? <laughs> be consistent, be persistent, like keep following up as well. Uh, but also, like you gotta make sure you're following up with the right person. Like try to find the hiring manager. You don't wanna be like needling them. What I always say is like feed them information. Like if they work on a specific project or in a specific category, whatever, just say, hey, I found this interesting article. And then that keeps your name top of mind without saying like, can you hire me please? Is there anybody else who has uh, questions? Yep. Yeah. How, when, when you're applying for jobs, how do you get people to see past what your current title is? How do you go in for a job that's not quite the same as what you're currently doing? Um, when people say what's best for me to do, I'll say know everything, but know something really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the argument is always I'm working in a team. It really is helpful to understand the other player's perspective. It's really helpful to have a 360 view and be able to add conceptually and strategically to a project. You can surround yourself with people in an industry that you want to be in and you can have a voice immediately. That's how you show like, okay, this is my job, this is how I'm getting money, uh, this is where I want to go to and this is what I've done so far. And you, you create that, um, those dots to put together yourself. If you have trouble putting those dots together yourself, an employer is not going to be able to put them together. So you have to be your own best advocate. It's all about, you know, just showing you understand it and your thinking. And I would say if you're if you're working in something and your passion's over here, just immerse yourself in it. You know, get to know the industry. There's plenty of like clubs and there's different, you know, go to a conference. Like just really get into it. It's also about minimizing risk, right? It's you're gonna make a hiring decision, you're gonna make an incredible investment in somebody. You know, compare yourself against the person that's Oh yeah, I'd like to do social media because you know, I'm on Facebook here and there and I mean, well, it doesn't really tell me how much you know about it, but the fact that you've actually gone to a conference and you've thought about it, I think that that helps to minimize that risk when someone's making a hiring decision. Thank you very much.